now. Well, thank you both so much for talking to me about this incredible film. Emma, how was your character Fran originally described to you? Um, well, she wasn't. I didn't actually audition for the film. Um, I put him on tape for it. He was reading for it and, um, and then he got the job and then I, I got a call. We got, you know, someone, my manager or whatever called uh, Robin had I called and said uh, the casting director and she was like, Hey, they want to know. Um, they really liked your off camera dialogue. Um, do you have any interest? The chemistry the two of you have. <laughs> I like, um, I would like you to do it. And I, I was like, Oh, fantastic. Great. I would love to do it. Cause I really liked, uh, I liked the project. I liked what it was saying. I like, I love, tr um, you know, true life stories. I love the period. I love, you know, I was, I was like, this is really cool. I think if you get this, it's going to be a really cool experience for you. Um, so I was happy to be on board. Um, and really, you know, Fran is just ultimately someone who at, at that time is, is, you know, I'm sure faces her own battles being a, you know, a woman with crap bosses um, and generally really likes Charlie and is his ally and wants to help and is like but you know there's you know the conflict was like this is what my boss is saying and it's but that's not cool and how do I you know how does she sort of navigate her her life with helping him and telling him the truth like hey p.s this is this is what's going on this is what they're saying and uh you know it's I think they have a really cool relationship she trusts him he trusts her that was definitely there in viewing it as well. Talk about working with Mike on this. There is that sort of innate chemistry the two of you do have as far as a bond as well. Uh, well I love him. I just love him. Um, I, I can't say enough great things about Mike Coulter. I was a fan of his before. Um, I became, I mean, just a fan of his work. And then I became a fan of him as a human after working with him, we, we both did, we, we became friends. And um, I've just, you know, I followed everything that he's been doing and I'm just like, she's just an impressive person. He's kind and he's, he's a natural leader. He sets, an, he sets the right tone for a set. He just doesn't let any BS happen. You know, he, he keeps, he speaks up for everybody ever. You know, I think there's just a, there's an immense amount of trust um, which you just need to have, um, which he instilled in everybody, in, including myself. Mark, talk about this challenging role. What did you in particular find uh, the most challenging aspect of Sharp? Not trying to play a complete, to be honest, dick, trying to play someone that learns something. You know, we all want to learn, right? Even if we're not a likable fellow, there has to be some humanity in the fact that like that they're doing their job, right? They, they're following the rules of like corporate America and they're doing what they're doing. But I was saying to someone earlier, I just found the fact that, you know, his character, or for me personally, whether it came across, it was just nice to, I, I felt like during the process of being him, I was learning about that culture. I was learning about him and seeing, hey, why haven't we done this this way? Like if I'm going to be the new leader of this company in the next 10 years, I need to learn. I'm going to do this this way. I'm going to include this group of people because I'm going to benefit. Yes, it's manipulative, but it's also the sense that he's open enough to understand where Dylan Baker's character, who's older, who's been doing it a lot longer, is like, oh, this is the only way. There's no other way. And this is the way it's going to be. And like, I feel like Mr. Sharp is manipulative enough to understand and smart enough. And it's like embrace the things that he knows will most benefit him. And it was, it was interesting. And I like to find those little kind of moments where even when he's taking his shoes off and pouring things out and just the humanity in him, because I think we were just laughing and talking about life and just the idea that even the worst of people have reasons behind what they do. Like even the most awful people still help their moms. Take the grandmas to the start. Even the worst, awful, most, you know, the people who don't belong on this planet one shipping off to another galaxy they have humanistic qualities and i think I just that was call, a, i call those like the leftovers like if you could just somehow <laughs> all these people just i don't like, know who's picking they just but... they just 
they just go. They're just like Gone. not around anymore. But yeah, it was fun. And Patrick, the director, was nice. And Mike and I had a blast. We laughed and had some fun. And that was great because he's the leader of your ship. Hmm. Well, there are a number of poignant scenes in the movie. What were some of your favorites of film, Mark, or maybe ones that really stand out to you? Um, well, <laughs> fun one was when we were in the helicopter and I was like, we're going to go in the helicopter, right? And they're like, yeah, you're going in the helicopter. And I'm like, wait a second, we're not actually taking off. And he goes, oh, no, we can't take off. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's not, dependent and, filming. And, it's, and I'm like, it's just, oh, yeah, we don't have license to take off. And I'm like, oh, okay, we're not taking off. Because I thought we were in a hell. Anyway, I was joking. But that was really fun because everyone was, it was just a nice inclusive moment between Dylan, myself, and, and Mike, just as humans. Um, but I most liked uh, my favorite scene was sitting across from Mike in the office when all the hippies were there and, and just exploding on him and watching him kind of, as I was doing it, he and I talked after, because I didn't expect you to go there. And he, he kind of recoiled a little bit and then he came back and it, it was kind of like a little cat and mouse. And I really liked Mike. And, um, and that, was, that, was, that was just a really nice moment. Um, he's got real levity and color in terms of vibrancy to his character that I didn't know he would bring to the role. So you have to adapt when the lead is like, oh, you're doing that. I'm like, oh, I thought about this. Oh, I'm going this way then because you're going this way now. So that was the nicest moment working with someone that was so open. He's just so good, I love him. We love him. I mean, your costumes were brilliant in this. Talk about the pieces that you wore. I mean, I the only, what I can say about them, I, I think it just sums it up is that I didn't get to keep them and I tried. <laughs> I just like, like, they're so cool. Can I just, you know, it's the second time uh, in my career I've, been dressed in seven and like oh maybe the third maybe the third time I've been lucky enough to wear clothes from the 70s um and they actually are clothes from the 70s you know they're not re, re you know whatever made to look new uh or made to look old rather um um although I can say the benefits from modernizing 70s clothes is that maybe you don't wear so much polyester um because wow it doesn't breathe you know I feel I feel a lot of sympathy for you know women who had to you know bad enough having to like wear polyester and like your downtime but like having to go to work and like show up and smile and take crap from your boss all while wearing this very like itchy uh not fat, cool. not not cool not cool um but still, I, I, I love, I just love it. I love everything about 70s fashion. Maybe it's for the exception of those really deep, like crazy flares towards the end, probably could do without that, but I, I love them. Mm -hmm. Mark, what do you hope viewers take away from I'm Charlie Walker? Hope, like for like change, you know, you know, we always talk about like the fact that that this is corporate like overlord that runs everything and that you know they have these little blips where they're like oh we've got to fix this mm -hmm. yeah it's not going to change that's not going to change we're still going to do this we're going to do this we're going to do what we do and we just don't really care for the consequence i just like i just really hope that people see that you know like i was saying to a lady just earlier that you know if you can change one person's opinion or you can change a percent of an opinion of somebody through like the fact that these are different processes and that the idea that you know you can about change i think that's that's the hope I think it's a simple, like, you know, speak up, do what you can and just keep pushing. Don't, don't recoil, don't give up. Cause we all know that, like I said to Emma, when we were talking about like the fact that these big companies run everything and like this oil leak, they don't care. Valdez, they don't care. Like the, all the different oil spills around the world, whether it kills every animal on the planet or whatever it be, people don't care. So it's up to like the minority, the groups of people to care and try and move things forward. And, you know, that's, just the fact that racism mm -hmm. one day, if we could all pray, was to disappear and just the people were looked at quite equally would be a really nice thing. Equality is a beautiful and timeless message. So uh, I think that's definitely one of the main things that uh, people will take away from the movie as well. Mm -hmm. And it's important just, I've, I, you know, I'm uh, to share experiences and true life stories from from the black community from an asian community from from basic i mean you know i'm not like bad whitey here but like 
like, come on, <laughs> like there's got to there to have this larger representation and to tell black stories um, is vital. And I'm so proud to be in something where you are telling a, a story of humanity and, and, you know, it's a, it's a, example of something that exists everywhere, but this is a specific story from a specific real black man who did go through these real events. Um, and uh, I just, I think the, the amplification of the black voice is hugely important and timely. I mean, it was just what I've lost track of the amount of shootings we've had in the last few weeks. And we're all, it, it's, 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 uh, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm just in a consistent state of sadness. Um, and I, uh, but I mean, racism is, is alive and well. So I think Sadly. now more than ever, it's a, it's a great time to see stories um, with the, the, the African-American black experience um, to show that things, you know, things have, things have been the racism and the, the all that it's all there it's always been there um but to see someone triumph for triumph over that particular experience and and um get that story told um there's still hope more there's still hope. hope hope well thank you both so much for taking in some time to talk to me about this beautiful film i really appreciate it you're yeah. lovely thank, thank you very you so much, much for your time oh my pleasure be safe and be well both of you oh, bye-bye bye.